Dominique Cran, welcome to Longer Tables. Hello, hello. Bonjour, bonjour. You say that in Spanish. Eh, hola, hola, chico. Buenos días. Buenos hola, días. ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Eh, Mi nombre, uh, Dominique Cran. ¿Tu nombre? You know, the first thing I learned in, in, in French was, ¿es que vous voulez accoucher avec moi? Oh I'm sorry, God. but uh, yes. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. It's the first thing we learned. I was in the summer. We were surrounded by all amazing, beautiful French men and women. And that's the first thing I remember learning in French. I don't remember what I learned in and Spanish. And what's the song? Est-ce que vous voulez accoucher avec, avec moi? moi. Oh, oh. Est-ce que vous voulez accoucher avec moi? I mean, I'm sorry, but I mean... That, I mean, that, that's a good line. That's a good on. phrase. Uh, do you want to sleep with me means, do you want to sleep with me? Doesn't that's mean, a, do you want to F-U-C-K with me? Means, do you want to sleep with me? I'm not going to touch you. We're going to lay down on bed, on a good cushion, on a good pillow, and that's it. That's it. You s- it's all sleeping. good. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, it's so much more sexy in, in French than oh, in English. My. God, this is so much more sexy. How do you, you say that in, in Spanish? Uh, ¿Te quieres acostar conmigo? Oh, oh, God, this is so long, like, so, like, it's just like, <laughs> voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce it, soir? It took me, I don't know how long, <laughs> to open this amazing wine from a, a great friend of mine, um, Vicente, who, he owns this Albariño in Galicia, Pazo Barrantes, 100% Albariño, this one is 2019. I don't know. It took me like, what, the last 10 minutes to open this bottle of wine? I mean, I know I'm supposed <coughs> to be opening <coughs> He's a you badass chef, but not a, a good of a wine f- opener. A French bottle of wine, but... Uh, hey, yeah, you know what? It's, it's, wine doesn't have any border. Uh, food doesn't have any border. Language doesn't have any border, except the French are better. Ah, that, that's pretty good. Border, better. That's rhythm. <laughs> So, <laughs> nothing to say. My dear friend, Dominic, <laughs> always when you are in the room, you are in charge of the room. That's a mother. You can be with me in a podcast. You can be with 10,000 people. If Dominic Cran is in the room, she is in charge of the room. Why? Because she has this amazing thing about herself. She she's likable. She always has this amazing big smile on her face. She wants everybody around to belong to the moment. She doesn't forget anybody. She brings everybody. Mm. It's not about her, but it's about mm. everybody else. Since the day I met her, I will say even before I met her, I always say, I want to be next to Dominic Cran. Because that's... What inspires in you? You want to be next to her. Obviously, when you become her friend and you are able to meet uh, her uh, half orange, uh, Maria, and her two amazing, cute children, um, Charlotte and Olivia, who, who are adorable, you want to be part of the Cran movement. So, you know one thing, Dominic? Every time I'm around you, I'm happy. Every time I'm with you, I'm happy. And I want to see more of you in my life. I, okay, so you guys, I don't know if it's, uh, there is video of it. I don't know anything, but like, first of all, thank you so much. Um, thank you for your words and thank you for this kindness. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be acknowledged, but you have to understand that I'm here also because I'm, I'm so thankful and so inspired about, you know, um, who you are, what you've done. And I think there is, we need, we need to, you know, life is about, it's about breaching the next generation. It's about using your platform to be able to give, to give love, to make this world a better world. It's not about yourself. It's not about greediness. It's not about power grabbing it's about you purpose in life is for me it's like wow i'm so lucky that you have people like you but also other people that say hey yeah i'm a, I'm a badass that's right and you are too and you know i remember when i was i i, I put cork what is this why that, is cork in your wife okay that's okay i didn't break the cork what's you, wrong here you know I, I gotta tell you this story when i was nine no, years I old cork. Okay, this is a good story. My dad was a politician. 
and I used to see people come in and out of the house. And where? Like, in France. But where? France is a very big country. Outside of Paris, like, you know, Paris, you know, and then uh, Meudon. Like Paris, the city of Paris? No, like Meudon, the, and then you walk, walk in Paris. The charming Paris? Yeah, we all, you always live outside of Paris. You never live in Paris. And I remember, and I said, wow, Dad, I was nine years old. I said, wow, you have, like, all those people coming in from the government and, like, all those cars and houses. And he's like, wow, you're so successful. And he looked at me in the eyes and he said, success is not what you own or who you talking to. Success is about when you have a platform, you always use that platform to give to others. And that's what success is. And that's what, I, as a nine years old little girl, kept that in my head. And I knew my journey was not about owning or having a lot of things, but success is about when you have a platform, you use your platform to make sure that you give people that don't have a voice. So this is where I am today. And of course, you need to make money, but you, with purpose, you know, everything that you do needs to be with purpose. And it's all about love. It's all about love, about sharing and having fun. And I love what you say because let's not think about negativity. Who cares about negativity? Let's look at the positive of things. All those people that are fighting in politics, who cares? Do the right thing where you are, make a difference. Tell me, tell us about your life. Where, where did you born in France? You born in Paris, outside Paris? You are a Parisian girl? No. no where I was, did you born? I was born in Versailles. You born in Versailles? I was born in Ver Versailles and at the age of, uh, by uh, my birth mother. Versailles, the Louis XV Versailles. Yeah, not, not, not in a cath castle, but very close. And um, she literally abandoned me when I was uh, six months old. So then I started to live in Versailles in the orphanage. Really cool. You, you a, grew up in an orphanage. Yeah, I grew up in an orphanage, yeah. But at the age of 18 months old, so not that long, I got lucky. Be, I got adopted by those wonderful people from Brittany, yeah. So you were adopted by a family in Brittany and you moved to Brittany? No, I, we stay around Paris, but the other house... But they but, were from Britain. Yes, yeah, so I spent a lot of time there, you know. So you were an adopted young girl. Yeah, I was. How, With a how, big smile on her face. Cause how she, that influences who you are once you realize you were an adopted You know, what I, what I realized that um, life, life is a journey. And then um, everyone's go through struggle. And for me to judge my birth mother because she gave me up is, is not my place. What I have to say, you know, I say well, I want to thank her to give me the opportunity to see another life, you know. Did you and ever reconnect it with your birth mother? Well, I'm, I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to do to find her. So that's another show we should do. Wow. But what's interesting is what you realize at this moment is love has no border. Love can come from anybody, even if they, they're not your blood. And that's very important. And that's, that's what keep me and, 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 and allow me to walk into this world where it's not about, you know, yeah, people can say it's about family, but who is your family? Family is the people that love you and care for you. It's the friend, it's your friend that's just giving you that space to be who you are. It's not blood, it's one thing. But when you are adopted, you can't talk about this. I talk about love and the people that gave me that. So, so I just kind of walk into life knowing that and not belonging to anything. So you believe that everybody should belong? Yes, to love. To love. To love and care. So you grew up uh, outside Paris? Yeah, in Versailles. The when was the move from, from France to, to America? So, and why? <laughs> you love to talk about France and how they're different than other people. So le let me tell you, I love my country, France. But this is one of the most bureaucratic country in the world. You can't do anything on your own if you're creative. I e every citizen of every country in the world will think that their country is the most bureaucratic country in the world. No, I so mean, welcome to the team of bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic citizens that believe the country is too bureaucratic. No, I, 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 did, I've, I've, I went to school, I studied, I have a bachelor in economy. 
I study international business. I wanted to be a photographer. And then I couldn't. Like nobody was taking me to school because I didn't have the right pedigree or the right diploma. So I'm like, hell no, I'm going to go to United States. So I watched, you know, those Starkey and Urch, you know, like the the series, the TV series, Starkey and Urch, you know, like. You know, like those, those the, the two detectives. Yeah, I want uh, your accent is so beautiful that yeah. I can't even understand. Yeah. Starsky and Hutch. Yes, and I'm the like, blonde, the blonde police, the blonde hair police, and I'm, the brown hair police on that I'm car. The, I, I don't uh, know, was it Chevrolet? I don't know. What was yeah, a I, super cool car? I am. So the, I grew I, up watching the show. Yes, too. me too. And it I'm was like, amazing. It was amazing. I'm like, yeah. let's go to America. And I because w- Starsky yes. and Hatch. Yes, that's it. You know why I wanted to come to America? Because I thought um, Peter Pan lived in, in, in Disney World. And I thought it was Iceland. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't make any sense. But I thought Iceland was America. And, and Peter Pan lived in America, which was Iceland. And I wanted to be Peter Pan and, 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 and yeah, be a pirate. So you wanted to go because it starts getting hot. That's it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like the, the country of, of where your dream can come from. How old were you when that happened? I was 21, 22 years old. You I left everything. I left oh, so, everything. So you said one day, I'm going to America. Yeah. And, and you made your luggage and, and you flew to okay, where? Okay. I, I flew to San Francisco. So my dad knew Why someone. San Francisco? My dad knew somebody in San Francisco. Okay. My brother just got married in May. Okay, in Brittany, and I remember a few days after his wedding, I was on, 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 on taking the train, and I saw my mom and my dad waving at me, the train to go back to Paris and t- take the plane, the train, and then I take the plane from uh, uh, Paris to uh, San Francisco, and they were waving at me, and I knew at that time that I was not going to see them again for an, at least a few years. And it was just that this vision of letting go of your past and the people that love you and going to a place that I had no idea where I was getting myself into. So my, my dad knew someone that used to work in a company and, and it was not food company. And I, f- and I came to San Francisco and his son was running a restaurant. And then this is where I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. It's like, maybe I need to work in a restaurant. So I went to, I looked at a lot of, I'm like, I'm French. I, need, I know how so to So you cook. were a French woman that began her culinary career, technically, whatever influence you got, in, yeah, yeah, sorry. Don't complain about the cork in the wine. <laughs> you already took two pieces of cork out of your wine. I said I'm not the best wine opener. It's okay. Even the wine is great. Yeah, the wine is delicious. It's the one that I keep the wine inside of the water. Not that one. Oh, not that one. That one. But this, that, but this one. wine is produced 500 meters from the sea Amazing. water. The vines, you can see the ocean. I love it. Uh, yeah. Pazo de Barrantes, amazing, from my good, good friend, Marques de Morrieta Winery. But let's go back. So you arrived, 21, 22, San Francisco. You were not being trained to be a cook. Never. You, you, you study uh, university and, and uh, yeah. finances and business and... Yeah. and and, and you arrived, and you began working in a restaurant at 22? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I needed to make money. <laughs> and you work in the kitchen or in the front of the house? Oh, I work in two. I, no, hold on. So I work in the kitchen first, in the lunch, and then, and then I work, and I was not making any money. I'm like, I can't pay my rent, you know, San Francisco. So I start to wait table, and I'm like, sorry, I'm going to say the F word, which is, which is okay. That's the first word that I learned. Fuck that. I'm like, I, I, then I start to do some research. I'm like, if I want to get into the kitchen world, I need to work with someone that is going to inspire me. And then so I, that, I, I did some research, and it was this man named Jeremiah Tower that was working with... The Ali- Stars Restaurant. Stars Jeremiah Restaurant. Jeremiah Tower, uh, we are talking about, when we talk about Europe and we talk about uh, Paul Bocuse and Michel Tragro and all and Georges Blanc and Michel Garard and there's so many amazing chefs of Nouvelle Cuisine not only for France but for Europe and right. in a way for the world when you talk about Jeremy Tower, you're talking about the chef that was not only the guy that very much began the California as we call it right. cooking movement 
but you could argue was the American culinary movement in more ways than one. Yes, and, and, and the beautiful things about him, if you know his story, he's never learned, he's never went to school for it. He, wa he was an architect. He went to, the, to become an architect. And so I'm like, then, I'm, then I saw a lot of things. I was like, okay, well, he's like me. So I, I walk into the kitchen and I, without no, no, no appointment. And, and he was standing there, just like tall man, very good looking, like just diaper to like, I don't know. It's like he was dressing like it was amazing, you know, out of like a GQ magazine. And he was looking at his kitchen. And I'm like, hey, hi, I'm Dominique Crane. Uh, I would like to talk to you. I know you're the chef. And he didn't talk to me. And it's like, dude, I'm Dominique Crane. I want to talk to you right now. And he's like, what do you want? I, sw I swear to God, this is the true story. And, and I said, well, you know, I, I am French. I'd never learned anything about cooking, but I, I, I think you're a good person I can learn from. And he was so, he was so taken by, you know, like the way I was talking to him. And I said to him, you know, I'm looking at your kitchen. It's like, where, where, where are the, the woman here? It's like, dude, it's like. So we're talking late 80s, early 90s. 1992. 1992. I came to America around 1991, 1992. Yeah. And then he looked at me, he's like, okay, you want to be arrogant like this? He's Barry Wine. He had the guilty giraffe in New York. Yeah. Bringing Japanese sophistication, spirit um, um, into uh, America. Obviously, at the time already we got and that chefs night, like Emery Lagasse. Obviously, French yeah, chefs like French Jean-Louis chef, Paladin. Yeah. But he, I chef think, yeah. of chefs. Yeah. Italian chefs like Roberto Donna in Washington, D.C. It was the deal. I mean, was was uh, obviously already Charlie Trotter, uh, a genuine American chef in Chicago, revolutionizing yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago. Norman Manaken, yep. in Miami, in Miami, Florida, Latino spirit, American yep. Southern Florida cooking into the forefront. Yeah, and 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 so many other chefs that we are forgetting because America. Yeah. What everybody forgets is that already in late eighties, nineties, was already at the forefront. With many chefs totally. doing amazing things. Amazing things. And, and this guy, this, this chef, and, and we're friends. We're still friends with him today. I mean, it's crazy. We're going to cook together soon. But, and he's like, oh, really? Okay. You're coming tonight, and you're, you're going to be on the, on the grill with uh, sous chef Sean. Okay. I got to tell you, they do 500 to 600 cover every day. And they put me on the hot side with the sous chef. It's like, oh, you, you think you can cook? Just get your ass there. And I stayed there for two years. So I began cooking when I was roughly 15. She technically began cooking when she was roughly 22, 23. <laughs> Eight years ahead of me. Uh, I already work in a Michelin star restaurant. Nigel, a French Alsatian chef in Barcelona. Ferran Adria, a young chef in the making in the north part of Barcelona. If you are 22, 23 years old and you are listening to Longer Tables and you don't know still what to do with your life, well, my friends, just follow the trail of Dominic Crane because it's never too early or it's never too, too late, late absolutely. to follow your dreams. To you can end being, like she is, a three-star Michelin before Jose Andres will ever get three. I only got two. I don't think I'll, uh, I don't know if I'll get three. I will try because I was a very young boy when I will walk in front of three star Michelin restaurants in Barcelona, two, three restaurants, trying to dream that one day I will work in a Michelin restaurant. People like Dominique, we follow the dream. What Michelin is? Michelin is a, a guide that began in France. Yes done by the Michelin company, the one that makes the tires, that they believe that they could do a guide, the red guide, the red book, where you could travel on a car with Michelin tires and go from city to city, going to restaurant to restaurant. This began over a century ago. A century ago, yeah. And they began giving the stars, one, two, or three. One is few hundred thousand restaurants around the world. Two is few hundred, three is few restaurants around the world. Dominique Graham was not only the youngest woman in America to get two, but was the youngest woman ever to get, a woman to get three. The day they call you and they tell you, Chef Cran, you've been awarded three Michelin. What happened in that moment in your life? 
What, what was that second you got that phone call? Because the Michelin guide calls you. Well, f first of all, that phone call is on video, so you can see what I'm doing, jumping around, looking at my two girls. Looking so at Google me. it, Google it. Google it, Dominic Crane, three Michelin star on video. Google it, but describe to us what was what we couldn't see in the video. What was going through your body, through your soul, through your heart, through your spirit? Well, obviously, um, it was first of all the team, but and the first things that I also came to my mind is, okay, you get a platform now. And I looked at my girls at the time, that they were very young, and I saw those two girls looking at me, and I said, okay, I'm gonna be a voice. I'm gonna help the young generation to make sure. Doesn't matter, you know, I mean, I don't wanna do gender things, but it's like, wow, you can do anything you want in life. And you talk about positivity and negativity. I look at life positively. Negativity is not a part of it. But we, we, need, we need to be there. We need to, bring, to be the bridge of others. But it was about, first of all, yes. I mean, I can tell you about my dad that passed away and my, my first phone call was, was to my mom. But my first look was not just with my team, but for the next generation. And that was like, wow. I've been the chosen one maybe to be the bridge. And so it was, it was very important to me. I was so honored, but I knew that the humility of that moment needed to stay with me and not get to my head. That was very important to me. Uh, yes, I have three Michelin star, by the way. You are. <laughs> Yet, it just, it was an humility and we have fun, you know, but I think it's, it's, it's like you, you know, like w the way that you walk in through life, you have giving the space to use your platform to just go out there, you know, and that's what I think, the, the, that's what we are here. We, you are nice, like what, what is it, like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old life? It's, it's a short, 90 years is nothing. What do you want to do with it? And I said to my team, our word is a great thing, but it doesn't define you. It's what you do with it that's going to define you. Wow. You and I, were ambassadors with Capital One, thanks to that partnership, which will do great things, I hope, in the next years. Uh, we, we cooked together uh, for first time. That, for me, was just opening mini bar and you coming to Washington DC and spending time together. And we did a menu together, which I, uh, I think was great. It's something uh, I think we all should be doing more often, right. cooking with friends right. in our restaurants, which is not restaurants, yeah. it's our homes. But they had such a great time. Um, I think we did a great menu during those two, three nights. It was amazing. It was, your it was team, my team, my team, your team. We were one team. One team. One team, one dream. That's all we are. You know, it's a good it, menu. Yeah. So how, how did I do for a two-star Michelin? I mean, I, it was a How did I do for a two-star Michelin? I mean, I, I got to I know you had to bring yourself down uh, no, in a three-star no. Michelin. I, I, I'm going to be very To cook with a two-star. How, how did we do okay? We, did I, we? I, you, you guys did amazing because I got to tell you that myself and my team were asking a lot of questions to your team. You know, I think the, 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 the one of the greater things that you, you do when you uh, share and work with someone like you, the, inspi the inspiration that we have when we came out, it was amazing. So I think I want to tell you, you know, life is not a competition. Life is not a ranking. There's going to be moments where you're going to have ranking and then number one, whatever. What we have to understand as human, those rankings do not define who we are. It's what we do with it. Yeah, of course, we want those rankings sometimes, but don't, don't, don't spend your life to just want that. Just, just look at the gift that you've been giving at that moment and then use that to get to the next moment. And then the ranking will come. Honestly, at dinner, okay, at mini bar, okay. Honestly, honestly, this is not a two, this is a three. And, and if I was a mission person, that's what I will give. Yet, I'm not a mission person. So for me, it was, it was everything. You touch me. You touch me, you, my emotion, and everybody was touched. So what you do is, is beyond anything else. 
So you like to travel to get inspiration? Do you read books? Do you go to the farmer's market? Do you, no. how do you keep moving your inspiration forward? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so, you know, like All of the above? No, never to the farmer market. It's interesting. I don't get inspiration from restaurant. Or I get inspiration from uh, art, uh, artist, uh, m movies, uh, writing, books, uh, people, people that you can um, talk for hours and you don't know them, or even so like you're a good listener. I'm a good listener, but I have to tell you one of the my biggest inspiration came from this little girl named um, Anna. She was 11 years old. And I did, um, I did a TED talk in San Francisco. Um, it was, I think it was my second TED talk. And this, this girl, this young girl, I think, came to me and she said, well, I, I just listened to you. And my, my sister want to meet you and really like you and will you come to hang out with her and i'm like yeah sure yeah who where is she she's at the children hospital in san francisco she had she has leukemia and i was just like uh, i was like leukemia i was like oh okay and then so i, I did a lot of research the, the the next few days i was there we meet the parents and then anna came and hold my hand and she's like I love you so much, and wow. you know I'm also a, a, I write poetry like you do, and I mean my eyes were like I just look at this little girl and she hold me, and then we walk around. She show me the aquarium, show me the aquarium, and like read poetry to me, and then she's like, "Will you come back the next day and and do like a cooking school, a cooking you know demo?" So I, I teach them how to do branches, you know, like chocolate branches, you know, like hard, you know, like in cold water, you know, you know, chocolate temper and putting in ice. And then I, I, I go there every day and I hang out. And, and then one week I had to go away. And then I got this phone call from the, the father. It's like, she's gone. And I stopped everything. I see, it was, it was uh, the spring of, almost the spring of 2012. And I called my team, like, fuck it. We're not doing this menu. And then I wrote another menu. So people inspire. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm almost going to cry because this is, this is powerful. Well, you so, gave, so, so you so gave you, hope to... You, you gave a, an amazing moment on the last uh, month, weeks, days of that, of yeah. that young person. But it's it happened to me too. I met, yeah. I met these. Uh, uh, the good thing for me is, in a way, he, he, he did okay. But then I met all the people next to it, all their children next to him. Right. The one I went to visit, who I met their families. Right. And you realize that some of them were going to make it and some of them were right. not going to. And I was coming back from trips. I remember coming back to the airport and they told me, oh, you go tonight? Right. Or you will not be able to say hi to this right. young person tomorrow. Right. And obviously, I don't care how tired you were. And use for you to think that like you will have an exchange of words with this person that knows is a young a young boy a young girl that knows he's in the last they're aware that they are in the last hours or days of their life right. and you're talking to them and they are so so peaceful so cool yeah so aware in ways grown-ups we are sometimes we're not, not. Yeah. They, they were different. more mature in the way they they approach every yeah. second in the conversation you had that yourself in things that are not even important. Well, I think they, 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 they are a gift to us and they allow us, you know, for consciousness to be more aware of what's going on, you know. And for me, it was, it was it, I realized that my journey in life is about storytelling. 
it's not just my story, but it's about also the people that I meet that become a part of my DNA. And through that, that journey, then this is how I get inspired through the menu. It's amazing. And so I want to thank, you know, also, you know, the people that cross paths with me, but also we have to understand that as human, it allows you also to bring awareness to things that you don't know. So when we go out in this world, be curious, be always on the quest of others and curiosity and, 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 and listening and, and looking of what you don't know is, it's amazing. Don't stay in your own bubble and think that what you know is the best because that's not true. So for you, the three Michelin stars was not the end. No, the beginning. it's the beginning. It's the platform. And, and thank you, Michelin, but it's the platform, yes. It's no, more to... It's great, and I think Michelin is proud of what you're yeah. saying. Michelin is giving you a platform, and me and everybody else used to say, look at this, the best of the best. She's one of the legendary chefs of the history of mm. mankind. Mm. But, but this is not your end game. It's used the beginning to do more in the world by... Actually, yeah by being next to somebody who's about to go to a better life and giving them hope and giving them, in a way, happiness in the last days or hours of their life. And you yeah. should be so proud of that, not only that you are given the opportunity, but that you want, want to do it. Because yeah. it's hard sometimes. It's a you, lot of, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, you have to be prepared mentally, physically, because this drains you. It's a lot. It's better to look to the, the other way. Yeah. And just to keep with your own life. But, you know, um, anybody that I done things that are showing up now because they have done the world, work, yep. you know. Like you look at Martin Luther King. You look at the feminist movement. You look at what's going on right now in Ukraine. You look at all those, they're planting the seed. Yep. You look in, in Iran right now. What's going on? They, th those people are putting their life on the line for others, but to the generation to come, it's going to make a change. Whatever we're doing right now to help others, we might not see the, you know, it's like you're planting the seed. You might not see the, the, the tree in front of you, but the next generation. And that's important to do the work, not just for ourselves, but for others. The world know? is going to be whatever we want the world to be. Yeah, exactly. And our effort is what is going to shape Ex it in exactly. the way we dream that world should We be. might not see the dream, but others will see the dream. So you said about inspiration. You mentioned many things, but you mentioned movies. Um, it's been an amazing movie, who is right now doing amazing. I know, it's crazy, right? The Menu. <laughs> oh, my God. With an actor, I cannot pronounce his name. Can you Ray pronounce? Ray Fine. I cannot believe I'm asking a French woman to pronounce. I couldn't at first. An actor they, they, they for me. me maybe okay, can then. you pronounce it again? Refine. He's an amazing actor. Oh my god! And so here you are. You know, uh, I got my opportunity. I've been Did in few it? food things. Some chefs, friends of ours, they've been in few food things. I love that we are uh, giving the opportunity to inspire others. I know. Thomas Keller, I think he had his stake and his influence in Ratatouille. We, we go Chef Roy, he had uh, his influence chefs. also on yeah. chefs, on the food truck. Uh, I did Hannibal, which was this crazy cannibal eating people. And I was able to help and influence the storytelling and the script writers to have smart conversations about eating human flesh and other things. And here you are where you've been part of the menu, which is this crazy movie about this crazy chef that people go to an island, the best menu in the history of mankind, but people may not be living that island as they were. How, how <laughs> was that experience for you? To use who you are, your creativity, tell us things we want to know be, beyond what we see in the movie. Well, I think it's, it's first of all, it was an amazing experience. Um, it was one of the greatest experiences in my life because it was something different. So I got the script uh, six months before they start to film, and I read the script. And in the course of like two hours, I called back my agent. I'm like, I'm doing it. And he was like, are you sure you want to do this? It's like, yeah, this is, this is too hilarious, and this is great. And so in the course of six months, we, we work with um, 
we did a mood board, so we had to work with uh, the team, the writers, and the director to uh, kind of curate what the menu will look like. And, and, and then when we, then we did a lot of testing at Atelier Cran, then we went to Savannah, and one of my job also was to work with Refine to work with him and to kind of guide him in a way that um, how, the, how a chef or, you know, walk through, you know, the restaurant and who he is and whatever. And then also making sure that all the detail on everything they were doing were really authentic in, in the way that a, a restaurant work, you know. So it's not just designing the menu. And remember when you do, and you have done menu for movies, it's all prop food. They don't eat it. My request was, are we going to do a menu? Oh, the actor is going to have to eat it. So every single dishes were, eat, were eatable, literally. And the reason why, because I wanted to get the, them, the emotion of eating something that is good. So that was one of the aircrafts. But that was, um, you know, the menu is, was also more than just fine dining. It's not more than just a satire, but it's also touch. Is some of the dishes on that menu, in your menu? <laughs> hey, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, it looks like, some looks like, yeah, for sure. But uh, I could do it again. But so Dominic Crane, no, it's all new. It's all new. It's all new. That movie. Yeah, totally. Yes, yes. Of course. Did you do like? Uh, yeah, did. Yeah, we, we, you know, we had many, many great actors and directors that they always did. You know, show up in the. Did, didn't you think about you showing up? Did you show up somewhere in the movie? I didn't watch it yet. By the way, no, I'm no, talking no, no, no. about the movie. Why no, not? Why? I'm, well, then you put your beautiful face oh, no, no, no. right there, I was, somewhere. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I was in the back. Like, I remember a long time ago, I went, I was on, the, I went on the set of a movie. It was like 20, uh, maybe like 15 years ago. And I said, I can be a director. Because you know that <laughs> you and I... You're a great person. Know, ...know how to create and know how to direct. And so it was amazing. It was so nice to be in the background. And, and show, you know, the creation with, with the, the director and the writers and, and have, you know, uh, this, this group of actors that put things together. It was amazing. For me, it was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. You know, I want, I want to be a director now. I don't want to be a chef anymore. No, I want to be a chef, but I want to be your director. Yeah, but be, I understand because I think you are my sister from, it's I a, think, let's from do a the movie. same mother. Let's, let, yeah. uh, let's do it's, a, mo a movie together, but... Uh, but, my, but, oh, but, right. but you want to do many things, and and this is what we face. I believe I am only as good as the people I have around Absolutely. me, and I Absolutely. know you believe in that too. Totally. And and that we, I'm trying to be a person that just gives credit to everybody else, I'm, I'm, because it's everybody else who makes things happen for me, yeah. and I'm tired sometimes of getting all the credit. But life sometimes is like that. But said that. We've been seeing in the last years more than ever. There's many restaurants from the 80s, 90s in France, Nouvelle Cuisine, that still are alive, that are still are open. The chefs may pass away, go to a better life, right. but the restaurants are still running as they are. But now we've seen over the last years, I think it began really with others, but Ferran Adria, El Bulli, my mentor, my friend, El Bulli, three star, one day he said, I cannot keep going at that rate. I, right. I don't want to keep creating every year. I'm shutting down. He's moving to another life. He has El Bulli Foundation. We saw good friends in California, uh, David Lynch, Manresa, in Los Gatos. He decided to close. Uh, others. We saw uh, Noma, uh, Red Seppi, one yeah. of the young, even not so young, most beloved, had huge influence on the last years. No, obviously only in his country, in Denmark, in Europe, yeah. but around the world. But Sergio Herman, not long, yeah. Sergio, I mean, who, who, doesn't matter that they did what they did, it's the right thing. Right. Everybody can live their own life. Right. Is, are you thinking one day you use Crane Atelier, Dominic Crane Atelier to shut down, or is something you will keep going? Not everybody is doing the same. Do you see that this is the trend 
that we need to close our great restaurants or why they cannot keep going. So, so it's never a black and white. No, it's never black and white, but I don't look at this. It's, it's, it, they, they, it's, it's, that's not what I look at, you know. Um, I think that's their journey. My journey is, you know, pastry, my, my partner and pastry chef Juan Contreras, we've been together for 17 years. And um, it was a dream that we had when we met in 2006. Uh, we opened Atelier Crane in 2011. Uh, our story together, um, what we're trying to do is to create a space that uh, can live as, a, as maybe forever in a, in a type of legacy, but we have so many other things to do. It's just, right now we just close Atelier and Barcran for renovation. It's four months, it's, it's, it's renovated, it's like nothing. I mean, the rain is in California, the, 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 the farm is, is, is on the water. It's like, well, okay, let's do renovation, you know? And then, then we just reopen the space the way we want to reopen the space. And then the time that we need to move on on something else, but we don't think about this, you know? I don't think about keeping a telling crane when I'm, when I'm older and giving to somebody else. This is, this is me and Juan restaurant. It's me and, and, and Maxime restaurant. It's me and my team restaurant where we want to move somewhere. It's like, okay, some, you know, it's, we don't look at this like this, you know. It's, uh, it's, we have so many things that we're doing, actually. We, uh, we are, you know, one of the restaurants during COVID, we, I, I closed this for two years. And every five days a week, we were cooking and making food for the homeless population, 500 meals a day. And that was so much more powerful to me, to do this every day with the thing from the farm, with whatever we had, you know, it was like this meal that we served to those people every day. That is powerful, you know. So, you know, is, yes, I'm, I have a business, yes, I have a telecran, is, it's just a little, things in the ocean. It's so much more. I want to do other things. I want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm connected to a lot of uh, different companies that just trying to do things better. I'm focused on humanity, on what can I do, the little thing I can do to be able to uh, uh, give my knowledge and to be a part of the movement, to chant things. Uh, I'm not here to put down people. I'm here to lift up people. Humanity is always important to you. I know you've been very active in trying to help uh, in San Francisco, even this is yeah. a problem. I will not say a problem, I will say it's an opportunity in other cities in America and other cities around the world of the issue of homelessness. Mm. We have veterans that are homeless. We have people that left university that they're homeless. There's right. many different reasons why people become homeless, but That's I know you've been uh, very, not only spoken, but very hands-on Mm -hmm. on trying to plant the seed of a solution right. to give opportunity to people not to be homeless anymore, but to be part of right. the community. What do you have to say about that? You know, I think this is important, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something that I don't really talk about it, but, um, you know, the story I told you earlier that I was abandoned when I was a little girl, but I know the story of my birth mother. My birth mother was... We, me and her, we live, we live on the street for, for as, as long as I was with her. So the, the idea of not have a home and, 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 and lose your dignity because you, that the, the people from the outside look at you, it's like, oh, you're homeless, you like nothing. It's so, it's so much deeper than people understand it. And I remember the first time I came to San Francisco, I was working at the Intercontinental Hotel, and I was living um, in a Portray Oil. So I used to walk every day from that part of the city and walk up to Fifth Street and C Street. And I remember on Fifth Street, there was this homeless camp that was there, that was there every day. I used to walk and I used to say hello to people. And I remember this man was reading a book and every day I say hello. And then one day I say hello again to him and he never talked to me. And then one day he looked at me, hey lady, 
why every day you come here and you like say hello? It's like, well, I just want to say hello because you read a book and I just, I'm so interested about what you're reading. I never say I'm interested about you being an homeless because I knew the struggle because those people come from everywhere. And, and we are, we as, as, as people, we have put those people so down. I live on the street with my mom and there's no, way, no one that should live on the street. There is no one that should live like this. You know, we have to understand that we have to give back to our community, you know. I mean, I don't know, it, it, it's just bigger than who I am perhaps, but it's, it's deep inside of me, so that's why I'm very, and that's the first time I talk about it, so. So I'm gonna ask you this question because for me, I think it's super important. When I see you and I see Maria, your partner, your fiance, your loved one, I see you as two amazing, wonderful people that love each other. When I see my wife and my wife sees me, it's, we're two wonderful people, we see each other. I have great friends for years that they are two men that they love each other. I know this is becoming sometimes in America around the world a controversy. Yeah. Seems that if you are not a man and a woman, a woman and a man, mm. you cannot have a family. But when I see people like you and Maria with your two beautiful children, when I see other friends, two male that love each other with beautiful children, beautiful family, the question is clear. What would you love to tell those people? That love is love. That love is love. And um, we have to... You can be religious or not religious, but I don't believe that God was ever... An... Are you religious? I'm spiritual. I come from a Catholic family, but I'm very spiritual. But um, I've never... You know, to have... Um, uh, to tell people that who you need to love or not to live to love, this is crazy. You know, it's, it's just a, a way of controlling others. So I'm not going against any religion. I mean, everybody is free to believe in whatever, but love is love. Love as you, 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 can't, you can't ever control who you can love. That is wrong. This is wrong. And love is love. That, that's all it is, you know. And, and if you want to control someone and it has nothing to do with you and they don't hurt you, then you got to look at yourself and to get a look at yourself to see what kind of person you are. And that's not the person I want to hang out with. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about what you believe. If you look, to, if you look at two people in love, you should always be inspired because it's so unattainable. It doesn't hurt anyone. And it just brings so much joy to people. That's what I want to say to people. Love is love. Just, 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 just be, be loving. And if you have a kid that come to you and say, I'm gay, or I'm tr whatever, love them. Yep. Don't try to change them. Love is love, it, I'm sorry. It's fascinating what you tell me, because me, um, and I'm talking here, they, they, they call a guy like me, I guess, a straight, because I married a woman. But I never understood all these concepts of straight, what is straight and, what is and gay, gay is and lesbian. It's when, I saw, when I see your two little ones, Charlotte and Olivia, who I'm self-declaring myself their uncle because I love those two little ones and see them growing with you and Maria. It's like, and Catherine, Catherine is the mom. So uh, let's, let's talk about sorry, Catherine. Catherine, well, she's Catherine really the who mom. I know is part of the family. <laughs> it's, just, it's just happiness. Happiness all over, all over. And I think we need to be telling everybody is that don't, don't, don't be so judging of others we, we, we need to stop judging people judging people come from people that uh, uh, bring the judgment into um, and, and ideas not for making people better but for controlling them we have to understand it see i'm going to tell you something there is two type of people in life there is people that will follow someone that to tell them what to do and then the other person, the, the other side of people are the people that are in quest of curiosity. And the only, one, the only thing they follow is their own truth. And there is no one else involved. 
It's just the curiosity of finding yourself. If you follow a person that telling you, you need to be like this, then that's the, yeah, exactly. Love is love. Love is love. Love is love. So I've been sitting here with you for the last hour. And we've uh, been drinking amazing wine, by the way. Amazing. Pato de Barrantes. And I'm, I'm here on your right, on your left. I see your right arm right under your shoulder, on your right arm. And, and there I see this beautiful tattoo in Arabic. Yeah. What, what it says? It's, a, it's, it's my name, it's my name, Dominique. So when I, when I uh, started to uh, do my DNA, um, I, I just, I was interested in it to see, it's like, what is in my blood? Why I'm so global, you know? So half of my DNA, uh, which is a very great story, we, that's the thing, I mean, I wrote I wanna it. know that story. So my birth mother was born in, during the, the, the German occupation in the occup occupied France. And she was the result of a French woman and a German soldier, Nazi, how you want to call them. And I don't know what happened, but in France, if you had a baby from a uh, German person, it was not good. So she was thrown in an, in an orphanage at birth. So that's the part. She stayed in the orphanage until the age of 17 then she left the orphanage at 17 years old and um, made her way to Paris. And during that time, she had two kids before me. From, I'm not sure how she, and then she had me. And then on, my birth, on the birth certificate, the first birth certificate that I find out, it was like no fathers, it was just whatever. So I wanted to know is like what is my what it was the other side. So when I did my DNA, it was like half German and French. Crazy, but the other half was like 33% North Africa, Egyptian, Arabic area, Anatolia and all that, and then a little bit of Russia, whatever I don't know why, wow. and Africa, you know, and and then I was just like. This is one of the. This is the. So you are a citizen of the world. Citizen of the world. So it just it's it's not too like, it it's just like oh wow. It's then I read about it. I'm like, I want to have something that just remind me that I'm also a citizen of the world. So love is love. Love is love. It just doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter where you are born. Doesn't matter what color of eyes that you have. Your hair, your nose, you know, my, my eyes are brown, my nose are like, you know, I have like, you know, it's different. Yet, we are human. There is just one species in this world. You say Egyptian, yeah, you have a Cleopatra in you, I see it. I was, Cleopatra was, a, was a Madisonian, for, was from Greece, you know. Yeah. But it's, it's like, you know, it's like animals, you know, you see them, it's like, it's the time and place, and there is, you know, the Darwin things, like, you, you have to adapt in the place where you are. So for us to see that there is a superiority on different, it's not, human is one species, period, is human. Then they come from different places in the world, human. You take a monkey, it comes from different places in the world, they don't look the same, but there is fish different, on the ocean, different, one species, fish, you know, elephant, you can get an elephant in India, doesn't look like an elephant in Africa, doesn't look, like, it's an elephant, period. A human is a human. It's where you are, the time and place, the, the weather, uh, 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 the, the ecosystem you're living in, it's gonna make you to adapt. First of all, if you, if you, you leave, if you This leave, is the three musketeers, yeah, D'Artagnan. It's exactly. Uh, one for all, all for one. All for one. I'm a D'Artagnan, by the way. <laughs> I know you are. I wanted to be a D'Artagnan. I know but, you are. You know, so you, uh, sir, you don't need to want to be one. You are a D'Artagnan. So love is love. So, I mean, there is the French and there is the Spanish people. Okay. Yeah, we came at the same time, by the way. We came at yeah. the same time, by yeah, the way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, use in case. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we go on in a, a world f soccer final. I mean, football, you know. Where, so, where, where, where were the Spanish in uh, the final? We let you be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dominique, thank you for being here in Longer no, Tables. No, thank you for having me. My sister, my...
Thank you. And, my, and, and my, more to come to you with you and my I. My friend. First of all, I, I want to say, you know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm here talking to you and, and I'm so grateful for you to invite me, but um, you are an inspiration. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, when I brought my kids here for the first time, they didn't know who you are. I never, I just say, hey, mean, go, go meet my, fair, my friend, uh, Rosie Andres, and, and what you gave to them, with the love you gave to them, is so much more than, than I, I just want to say thank you. And I know people talk about you, you, have, you aren't, you know, you're doing all these things, but if you, if you know Rosé, Rosé is an incredible person. And, um, I mean, he's a good cook. And, well, I don't like the way that he makes oyster, but that's okay. But um, <laughs> I am so inspired by you, and thank you so much. And I remember the first time that I did um, uh, an event with you was in Los Angeles at, um, what was the name of the restaurant? Uh, uh, the, the Bazaar. The Bazaar. And I, I remember, and um, you came and talked to me, and... And I felt very um, thankful for that because I was, I was not in the league of other people out there. But I think you saw me that day. Are you kidding? And I, and I appreciate. I knew you were going to get three stars before me. <laughs> no, but I just want to say, just as a, as a, as a person to person, as a human to human, thank you. I love you more. She's my friend. She's a friend of many. I will say she's, you know, yeah, she's my lover, and I hope I'm her lover. Because sometimes you don't have to have just physical content. You can be a lover out of a spirituality. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. you know one thing? You are my lover because your spirit is in me. Thank and you. And forever, I love you, my sister. Oh, no, I love you too. Okay.